G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Alright, and the market responded positively when I was a little bit worried. Oh God, well look, I'd rather be worried and it do well than not be worried and it do bad. So I'm happy to be proven, you know, wrong in circumstances like that every day of the week. I, I don't mind at all. Now, Bitcoin particularly, when we get to the charts, you'll see that it was under the 50-day moving average. It was struggling with it uh, just last night when I did my video, and this morning, uh, it's jumped up above it. So it really is all over the place. And look, not so much all over the place, but it's in a ranging motion, like I said. And as long as it just keeps to range, you know, kind of stays above the $46,000 level, then altcoins are going to do absolutely amazing. And I mean, look, Dogecoin, far out 63 cents. I think it's legitimately going to hit a dollar, but I still just can't put money into it. Because fundamentally, there's just nothing behind it. So for me, yeah, it's just too high a price now for me to jump in when I know they're not building anything on it. But congratulations to anyone who has, you know, bought in and stayed in. And we looked yesterday. If you had put $1,200 into Doge exactly a year ago, you'd have $400,000 right now. I mean, that is unbelievable. And, you know, look, Doge is getting ready to take out Binance coin. <laughs> it, legitimately, it legitimately is not too far off. And again, look, I'm not hating on anyone who's into Dogecoin. Just for me, I just can't do it. But, you know, that may be why I'm not going to be a super squillionaire, millionaire, billionaire. <laughs> but hey, it is what it is. Anyway, let's have a look. So the market cap is up. So $2.4 trillion, getting close to that $2.5 trillion. And then, you know, looking to knock out $3 trillion and $5 trillion and things like that. BTC dominance, 43%. ETH dominance, 16%. But now we can start to see gas prices go up. So, you know, 60 is still not too bad in overall sort of things, but we were down around the 30s and the 40s, so they have jumped up a notch, uh, and that's concerning because, yeah, gas prices just, you know, it makes it ETH too hard to use for the average user, you know. If we're going to have to pay, you know, 5 or $6 or $20 or $40 or 100 and something dollars, for one transaction then we just can't use it so you know the berlin hard fork definitely has helped in bringing them down but is it enough to keep them down well i guess we're going to wait and see but at the moment it's not looking like that's the case but you know look if as high as it gets is kind of 60 or 70 then that's better than the you know the 100 or the couple hundred uh guay that it's been uh previously so anyway let's continue on What's done really well in the last 24 hours? What's really pumped? I mean, Bitcoin's up 5% in the last 24 hours. So we're happy with that. And it is up 7% for the last, sorry, 3% for the last seven days. All right, Telecoin. No idea what that is. But anyway, it's done well. Bitcoin Cash. They got a bit of an upgrade coming up soon. Ethereum Classic. Again, it's got me stumped why that's happening. You know, and there's a number of coins that seem to be doing pretty well. I mean, 20% gains, 15%, 18% gains, you name it. They're all just generally doing pretty well. And look, even Polygon, 81 cents. I think 89 cents was its all-time high. So it just continues to go up, uh, doing extremely well. So plenty of really good gains in there. Has anything not done so well in the last 24 hours? Has anything got smacked around a little bit? Not really. Waves is down, you know, 4%, 3% for Uniswap, 1.5% for Maker. So hardly any losses there whatsoever, really. There's about sort of four or five coins that have had some losses in the 24 hours, and all of them except for this uh, Clayton uh, is still up for the week and up uh, not too bad as well. I mean, Uniswap's not up a whole lot, but still... A 6.2% gain is better than a 6.2% loss. That's the way it is. So look, again, the market in totals jumped up 5.3%. So that really, really is good. Now let's go have a look at Bitcoin itself. So it is now up at the 50-day moving average. So this is where we are. It's found its way back to the 50-day moving average, but it hasn't been able to jump above it. But look, it almost bounced, not quite perfectly, but it was very close to the 100-day moving average. So at the moment, it just looks like Bitcoin is just going to continue to range between the 50 and the 100-day moving average. Now, if that continues to happen, the 100-day moving average and the 50-day moving average are going to get closer and closer together. Now, my sort of, you know, again, my 
and it's a guess. I'm going to put it out there. That's what they always are. It's a guess. I don't know exactly what's going to happen. I've said that before and no one does. My guess is that the 50-day and the 100-day moving average are just going to get closer and closer and it's going to get tighter and tighter until we then just push higher. That is what I'm thinking is going to happen, but that's not financial advice. I could be wrong because as I've said, we still just can't break above this kind of you know, $57,000, $58,000 range. We've been stuck under it for quite some time. The last time we were sort of above it was the 18th of April, so that's almost a month ago. We're not too far off that. So really, we need to be able to get above this, and then we need to get above this, which is around that $62,000 level. Really, above sort of 58, and then above $62,000 level, I'm pretty confident that we're going back up and we're starting to set new all-time highs. But again, this has just been, we could say it's really been ranging since around about sort of back here. So that's, you know, what, the 10th, 11th, Eighth, there we go, of February, thereabouts, we've just been ranging up and down and sort of all over the place, traveling sideways. Don't get me wrong, I mean, you know, the 9th of February, we we're only at what, $46,000. We made it up to sixty sort of $4,000, came back down to retest $46,000. So it's just ranging sideways. Look, this is really, really bullish for altcoins. That's why they're doing so well. The only concern is if Bitcoin goes under this 100-day moving average and we really start to push down into here, altcoins are going to get hit really, really hard. That's always the way it works. It's not so bad if Bitcoin drops, but it's in a ranging motion again like this, then that's fine. Altcoins can continue to do bad. If Bitcoin gets on a run and really starts to pump hard, altcoins will bleed a little bit. The, some of the profits will be taken out and everyone will push back into Bitcoin and that's fine. Because uh, Bitcoin will still, you know, lift most other things with it. But it's if Bitcoin really starts to get pushed down, that's when altcoins will get wrecked. So just buy a beware. I'm not saying that's what is going to happen. But I'm just always, again, if you've been watching my channel for a while, I'm constantly, all right, this is what I think is going to happen. But what happens if I'm wrong and something else happens? So that's where I'm at. All right, Litecoin. Have a look at this. It's been on such a downtrend again. Not in the dollar. The dollar is doing well. It nearly hit its all-time high. I think got to, where are we? $354 right now is where it's at. Very nice. And its all-time high back in 2017 was 360 So we are very, very close. And we can see it got oh so sort of close uh, the other day. So 358 just didn't quite... Uh, get there and then had a bit of a sell-off but look it looks like it's starting to make its way back up now so we go to litecoin now against bitcoin it's been in a downtrend for a very very long time uh, it's been getting absolutely nailed by bitcoin but what we can see is it broke this downtrend it's come back retested it a few times and now it's starting to make its way back up so litecoin at the moment is only worth sixty-two thousand. Is that 62,000 or is it 622,264 Satoshi? So that's what it is against Bitcoin. Here's what's scary though. This is how much higher Litecoin could go against Bitcoin. I don't know if it's going to be able to get up here again and go to the, you know, 0 0.2, uh, 0 0.02 Satoshi level against Bitcoin. But I think it could easily get up to sort of somewhere within here. So, you know, 0 0.15 uh, of a Bitcoin. That would make Litecoin worth quite a lot. That would not be too bad at all. And again, that is, you know, dependent on whatever price Bitcoin is worth at the time. You know, if Bitcoin is worth, you know, let's say $100,000 when that starts to happen, then good Lord, you know, Litecoin could be worth a lot. But again, the problem is Litecoin has been losing value against Bitcoin for quite some time. But there's lots of positive things happening in the market and that may change that. And again, sort of mass adoption of cryptocurrencies, people may start to use Litecoin a lot more. And so we'll move on to that. So this is, is very, very interesting. Hundreds of banks to allow, in the US, sorry, to allow customers to buy, sell and hold cryptocurrencies through their existing bank accounts. So hundreds of the banks in the US will, will reportedly start offering access to Bitcoin to their customers this year, thanks to a partnership between Fidelity National Information Services and the New York uh, Digital uh, Investment Group, or NYDIG. 
Hundreds of banks have enrolled to participate in the program as they see funds moving from bank accounts to crypto exchanges. So that's what they're worried. They're like, oh, everyone's taking their money out of the banks and they're putting it into you know cryptocurrencies and i.e. Bitcoin, Ethereum, Litecoin, things like that, and going to exchanges. And so they can see the writing on the wall. They have no choice. They have to start getting into cryptocurrencies. Uh, and this is going to push the space even higher because there'd be tons of people that are happy with their banks. They're just not happy with the money that they get. So if they can put their cryptocurrency in their bank and it starts to earn them positive interest and not negative interest, then that's exactly what they're going to do. I'm not saying that's what I would do and I think is the best solution, but that is what other people would do. I can tell you right now. And people who don't know anything about cryptocurrencies and are worried of getting scammed and all the rest of it, if they can just simply buy it at their bank and their bank will hold it for them, they're going to pile into that. Because now it's legitimized. They're like, I thought this was all scams and this and that. And now my bank's selling it. All right, I'm on to this. Because they trust their banks. Banks are insured. If they lose money, then, you know, they'll give it back. Or, you know, supposedly anyway. So now FIS is a vendor to banks with nearly 300 million checking accounts. So this could open up a lot of, uh, you know, avenues for more money to come into cryptocurrencies. Now it says here, what we're doing is making it simple for everyday Americans and corporations to be able to buy Bitcoin through their existing bank relationships. If I'm using my mobile phone, my mobile application to do all my banking, now I have the ability to buy, sell and hold Bitcoin. And look, it won't just stop at Bitcoin. It's the same for everyone. Pretty much anyone who comes to the crypto space buys Bitcoin. They hold it, they learn it, they get to understand it. Then they move to something like Ethereum. They hold it, they understand it. Then they start just de delving more and more into that whole space. And these banks are going to be no different. They are going to start with Bitcoin. That's going to push the Bitcoin price much higher, most likely. That's not financial advice. It's just my personal opinion. And then they're going to start to pick up on these other ones. They have to be regulated. I don't think banks are ever going to go into these full random, you know, number, you know, 782 <laughs> random coins they're not going to do that they probably can't but yeah this is massive news and this is in america wait for the other banks around the rest of the world to follow suit because they will follow suit all right so a bit concerning but we've already kind of known about this for a while so there's a u.s bureau sorry not a but there's u.s u.s blah, blah, blah. Bureaucrats, particularly Democrats, are concerned about climate change and have introduced lots of legislation in order to address these concerns. And I'm all for this. I love it. Now a lawmaker from New York State, sorry, New York, wants to establish a moratorium for Bitcoin mining facilities located in the state, which means cryptocurrency miners in New York would have to halt operations. Senator Calvin Parker believes Bitcoin mining has a negative environmental impact and businesses would have to pass state greenhouse gas emission targets uh, in order to continue. Look, I'm sort of in agreement with this. We Bitcoin mining uses a whole lot of power and because of that, it really needs to focus on that green energy. So, you know, I don't think they should just be shut down immediately, but they should have to be taking active steps to be as green as they possibly can. So, so I'm all right with this. Uh, well, I'm not even all right with it. I'm kind of in full agreement with it. But I just don't agree that they should be shut down. They should be given time to, you know, alter how they're doing it and green energy 100%. I think, you know, basically everything needs to go green energy. And, well... Yeah, not basically everything does need to go green energy. So I support parts of this, but not the shutting them down part. All right, Mike Novogratz, Dig, uh, Galaxy Digital, they're going to acquire BitGo. So, and they're going to have... Uh, sorry, I lost my uh, train of thought there. So yeah, they're going to acquire BitGo, and it's got a val bit go not bitco it's not costco <laughs> bitco and it has a transaction value of about 1.2 billion dollars that, that's a lot of money and mike novogratz is digital galaxy i mean they've got all sorts of stuff they've gone for bitcoin etfs i think they've even uh, tried to go for a uh, ethereum etf and things like that so you know finally mike novogratz it looks like has been proven right because he was kind of laughed at you know a few years ago getting into this whole space and then they went through the bear market and everyone was like you know, he obviously lost sort of some money there, or at least maybe not, you know, uh, 
he would have lost unrealized gains and stuff like that. I don't think he actually lost, you know, true money in the sense of how much he ever put in. Could be wrong, but you know, now he's the last one laughing at, at the moment. He is doing extremely well, and so is his company. So the firm reported it was responsible. So this is BitGo for twenty percent of all global BTC transactions. So tw- that's you know, of every single time BTC is transacted, BitGo, a bit. Go, God, come on, has had a a hand in 20% of all those transactions worldwide. And their AUM has increased to over $40 billion. Wow, congratulations to Mike Novogratz uh, on, you know, acquiring BitGo. And, you know, again, I I see BitGo doing, you know, even better in the future. Now, this is uh, a little bit concerning. A South Korean crypto exchange has been accused of $1.5 billion scam. So housewives and senior people are among the 40,000 members conned in a recent crypto scam in South Korea. So these things are happening all over the place. You know, there's even, they're happening here in Australia, all over the world. Be very, very careful. If you're going to keep your, your crypto on an exchange, make sure it's a trusted exchange. You know, it's not just some random one. And even then, like just, you know, don't keep all of it on exchanges. You know, if you want to keep some on there, look, I keep some uh, of my crypto uh, on an exchange, but nowhere near, you know, the total amount that I have, you know, I've got it in various different places. Don't have everything in one place because if something happens to it, then you're just done. You've got nothing. Uh, hopefully people who've been watching my channel and just into crypto know that, but that's really sad. It was, you know, particularly if, you know, senior people and maybe they've put in kind of their life savings hoping that they're going to change their lives and now they've lost everything but I think it won't take long for the South Korean government to catch up with these people and generally these people get caught eventually might take five years might take 10 years but eventually they get nabbed and then they spend a long time in jail and I'm all for them spending time in jail particularly ripping off you know people who just never had a lot of money in the first place all right, members of Wall Street Bets Forum alleged in Telegram crypto scam stealing $2 million worth of BNB and ETH. Now, again, this is just alleged at the moment, so we don't know if this is true, but, you know, I really kind of like what the Wall Street Bets guys uh, have done, you know, going against the big players, but, you know, if they've been stealing off the little guys and things like that, and I'm not saying they have, I hope this is not true, then that's really, really poor form. So Wall Street Bets Crypto Pumps Group on Telegram duped more than two million in BNB and an undisclosed amount of ETH from crypto investors. That really sucks, and that's why I don't get involved if any in any of these, you know, kind of Telegram groups. And that way they say, right, yeah, we're all gonna on mass go and buy this stuff and pump it up, and then we're gonna sell it at this price. Because a lot of the time, or well, not a lot of the time, but at least some of the times. You know, when you go to these groups, they've already bought the coin. They're waiting for you to pump it up and they're going to dump on you before you get to sell it. And that's, so I just stay away from that. I'll make my own decisions, do my own research. And I'm an investor rather than, you know, someone who's trying to get into pump and dumps and things like that. So, you know, beware. All right. Grayscale teamed up with uh, the New York Giants. So the largest digital asset manager, Grayscale, has partnered with the New York Giants, thus becoming the first crypto affiliate uh, to the NFL. So again, this whole space is growing. And I can't remember what's the... There's an arena that a crypto exchange has uh, got the naming rights for. It's totally lost me at the moment. But now Grayscale partnering up with you know the New York Giants. This space is just going to continue to grow and really is the future. This is going to be such a massive space in the next, I think, 5, 10 to possibly even 20 years. So not just the cryptocurrencies themselves, just everything sort of that's going to surround it. You know, they're going to support teams. They're going to be sponsors. They're going to be this. They're going to be that. Like just, yeah, I'm so glad that I, you know, made the decision to get into cryptocurrencies back in 2017. And this is going to sound really strange. I'm super glad I got in late in the bull run and got smashed in the uh, bear market. Because I learnt more from the bear market than I did from the bull market. You don't learn uh, too much in a bull market other than, oh, there's so much money and it's so easy. All right, cool. What happens when it stops? 
how do you know when it's about to stop and what do you do when it stops for me i had no idea i just completely wrote it out but like i said i simply held from you know turning 800 dollars into four thousand two hundred dollars that uh four thousand two hundred then turned into about three hundred and fifty dollars and that three hundred and fifty dollars has now turned into about five or six thousand dollars simply by holding i did shuffle some stuff around you know more into the big coins i had some random sort of altcoins that weren't doing so well and by holding yeah i've, I've done all right and that's the one thing i've learned is generally unless something really really bad has happened to that space or specifically to what you're invested in if you just hold long enough eventually you're probably going to be in profit again and well in profit so something that's something that's stuck with me uh again i'm not telling you to go do that i'm just saying that's what i do all right polka dot parachains full of promise but lack of launch date raises concerns so again i've spoke about this it's the same with ethereum it's the same with cardano with all of them bitcoin's the only one that is kind of a finished product it's not that it can't develop further but it's already doing what it's promised now it's just got to learn to scale a bit more ethereum cardano polka dot cosmos they're all a promise they're not a finished product they still haven't proven things so that's what you need to be aware of now i've got a a bag of polka dot and i lo love it i haven't done too much with it other than really other than really just stake it but it's been great but that is all that i've really done with polka dot and they still haven't got all of this stuff launched yet so just remember that you bought you're, you're like a vc uh, a, a venture capitalist you know investing into something early before it's a finished product to see what happens not all of them are going to work out some are going to fail and you unfortunately probably lose just about everything uh, that you invested into it hopefully that wasn't everything you own but if you kind of you know spread things around into a few different things you only need one or maybe two of them to do well and they completely make up for those losses so that's really uh, where I am with polka dot and look there's you know what about the prices and it goes down to here a word of caution though ultimately the hotly anticipated rollout of parachains does not just mean good news for the projects involved or those holding the Kasama or dot tokens while Bitcoin and especially altcoins have experienced a boom in recent months for example the price of dot has mostly gone sideways ever since the initial surge above $40 in mid-February further delays to the release will likely put more pressure on the price of the token and that's true polka dot did really well up until February and now it's just traveling sideways but in saying that when things travel sideways this is usually them forming a base and eventually they're gonna break now it could be to the downside that's absolutely possible but again with all this news that we're looking at at the moment I would say the chances are it's probably gonna to break to the upside and I think dot is going to do exactly the same it's just been pushing sideways pushing sideways so it's building a base people are happy to sell it for forty dollars but people to have people are happy to buy it you know kind of around thirty dollars and so it's just stuck in this ranging motion at the moment but eventually either the sellers will outweigh the buyers and it'll go down or the buyers will start to outweigh the sellers and it'll start to push up and that's what i think a lot of the time when you see this basing uh, kind of thing it's usually just the sellers starting to exhaust before the buyers start to take over but again that's not financial advice and it's not always the case all right the bahamas and their sand dollar so they're pushing for national digital currency adoption this summer so wow that's basically our winter here in australia and we're just getting ready to start our winter so it's not far away and a lot of people have said that they believe the bahamas sand dollar will be the first uh digital currency that's sort of available to the world they think they're gonna you know outdo china and that and then i think there was another place uh out in the south pacific and algo was going to build it for them uh, i can't remember exactly now something like kiribati or something like that again way out in the pacific uh, they're the countries that they think are going to come out with a digital dollar first and the bahamas uh, looking like they're not far off in the sand dollar all right goldman and Sachs leads a 15 million dollar round for crypto startup coin metrics so again there's so much money being poured into crypto at the moment it's hard to be bearish it's not to say we couldn't have some bearish kind of trends but i just don't think we're going to see any really really big dips now 
as we travel sideways more and more often though all of these start to get closer the 200 day moving average gets closer the 100 day moving average gets closer to the 50 day and the 50 day can even end up moving under the uh you know 100 and 200 at times but what i think is we might come down and touch the 200 day moving average but it will be if we continue to travel sideways for a little while and the 200 day moving average just starts to get closer and again maybe the 200 day moving average eventually gets to about 47,000 and we've just been ranging sideways and it comes down bounces off the 200 and then starts to really push everything else up so that's what I'm thinking could happen now other people invested so it wasn't just uh, Goldman and Sachs they were one of the biggest investors and again 15 million dollars was raised for coin metrics but BlockFi, Accru Ventures, Morningside Group, and War Warburg uh, Series, I think that's supposed to be, investments also joined the funding round, while Castle Island Ventures, excuse me, High Capital Partners, Fidelity Investments, Avon Ventures, uh, Commu Communitas Capital, and Colab Plus Currency each increased their prospective stakes in the company. So again, there's so much stuff going on it's hard to be like you know bearish bearish that the whole market's getting ready uh you know to peak out and fall over i just don't see it happening at the moment and particularly you know with hundreds of banks in the u.s about to give it to other to you know american customers the rest of the world is going to follow suit i can guarantee you on that now PayPal again, so they've boast they've posted another blowout quarter with record revenue numbers and user growth. They just continue to grow. So the company's total payment volume in quarter one eclipsed the quarter four holiday season when everyone's out spending their money. So people are spending more money or at least using PayPal more now than they were in the holiday season. PayPal is enjoying the tailwinds of e-commerce and digital wallet adoption. People are getting into cryptocurrencies. Uh, and starting to pile in in mass. I mean, we had that thing from the MasterCard survey the other day, 77%, that's, you know, three quarters, which is nearly all of millennials want to learn more about cryptocurrencies and get into it. Again, 77%, that is basically all of them. There's a few that don't. Again, three quarters, you know, yeah, that is telling you where this space is going. Q1 revenues of 603 billion and earnings per share of $1.22, which handily beat analysis predictions of just $1.01. So again, that's that's a lot. That's you know, 22 cents when you're only talking about a dollar, you know, is a lot. I mean, 22 cents of just a dollar, uh, that's you know, sorry, a fifth of it, but now it's gone over that dollar. Look. I can't be more bullish about this entire space in the sort of long term. Now, again, mid to short term, we could have some fluctuations and, you know, sort of mid term, like another year or two, we could go through another bear market. But look, over the next sort of five to 10, and again, maybe even 20 years, I think this space is just going to get unbelievably big. It really is going to uh, revolutionize the world and the way we do payments and I think even stocks are going to be tokenized and yeah I think things are looking super bullish but the problem is now that I've said how bullish it is crypto likes to slap me in the face every now and then and things could possibly turn really bearish but I hope that's not the case all right look a bit of a long one today a lot of information out there and again, for me, I'm just hodling at the moment. I'm not panic selling anything. Uh, I'm never going to try and panic sell. Like, you know, if I lose, I lose. I know I've put my money into some really good things and I've learned from that 2017 peak to the 2018 low back to this peak that if I just hold, I'm generally going to be all right. It might take me four years, but in four years' time, I will have made more money and generally a lot more money than I ever sort of put in initially. So that's it from me. Stay safe, be kind to one another. Hopefully you're all on that gain train at the moment because things are looking pretty good and the entire market cap is up. And I'll see you next time.